Hi everybody and welcome to the Anton Art Center. I'm Tara Schroeds and roses are red and violets are blue and I'm not a good poet but a lot of people are. And today on Art Pieces you're going to find out about the history of poetry. The introduction of the printing press in 1440 in Germany, based on an earlier version created by a Chinese inventor, arguably had more impact on the world than the steam engine, incandescent light bulb, and Facebook combined. Never before had the written word been available to the masses, opening up their hearts and minds with the publishing of texts both religious, Gutenberg's Bible, and secular. The written word could now speak to people, as the Gothic cathedrals and their stained glass pictorials had in the centuries before. But the history of poetry and the written word started long before Gutenberg's invention. Not only did the Sumerians, inhabitants of ancient Mesopotamia, create the first known system of writing between 3300 and 3000 BC, they also gave the world the Epic of Gilgamesh in about 1200 BC. Gilgamesh would be the precursor of such great literary works as Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, Proust's Remembrance of Things Past, and Joyce's Ulysses. In China and much of East Asia, the written word was elevated to an actual art form in the practice of calligraphy, with some of the finest works executed during the 4th century. Rendering characters in dramatic brushstrokes on silk or paper, calligraphy was the most highly regarded form of artistic expression in China for nearly 2,000 years. In the Western world, Europe would dominate the literary canon from Dante and Shakespeare through Balzac and Goethe, and culminating in the romantic verse of Byron, Keats, and Shelley. Then, in the 19th century, the American transcendentalists would prepare the way for first-person prose and free verse poetry, the latter of which was immortalized in the brilliance of Walt Whitman. His leaves of grass would set the standard for the next generation or two of American writers to follow, with Jack Kerouac and the Beat Generation gladly accepting the torch of literary freedom. <laughs> 